that's the deal is yeah. he who gets in the most training, productive training, yep. it's gotta be that. He who gets in the most productive training gets fittest. Mm -hmm. So all we're trying to do is shorten that up. Interesting. If you can shorten that up, you get to train more. If you right. get to train more, you get to, Back in the day when Lance Armstrong was the king of the yep. king of the Tour de France, when everyone was doping, yep. so let's call it an even playing field, <laughs> right? No one could hang with him because no one could recover like him. Fast. Now yeah. it sounds ridiculous me saying that even out loud now because everyone knows he's doping. Yeah. But that's the deal. Yeah. They can't hang with his training program. It's not that he's genetically this freak, it's that he can recover faster yeah. than other people. What confidence is has nothing to do with winning or the leaderboard. What confidence is, is knowing that you giving your best efforts is enough. Hello, Ben. Hello, Patrick. I think this is the first episode we've recorded in 2018. So I know we've released a couple, but I think this is the first one. So happy new year. Happy new year. All right. Exciting. Yeah. So today talking about something that we've danced around a little bit. I know we've mentioned it in different episodes um, and that's recovery. And I want to talk to you because there are only, you know, one of the things you say a lot, there's only a few, four or five, five things that an athlete or a person can really have, uh, has control over. Um, and when we're talking about athletes, you know, there are things like, um, well, actually, that's the first question is, why don't we recap what are the five things that we really have control over? Because those are the five things that we really want to make sure that we are maximizing. Sure. Yeah. So, um, these things live inside what we call the process. Yep. It's a, a term coined by Nick Saban, who is pretty successful and yes. continues to be more and more successful. Alabama football coach just won the national championship again. Um, so it's something that uh, we believe in inherently as well. It's been a big influence on my coaching style. And I believe in the process. And the way we've defined the process is, let's figure out the four or five things that we have control over. Um, that's not an arbitrary number. That's we've tried to figure out what those things are categorize those and let's put everything we have i mean when we talk about this you're going to see like how much we focus on this but everything we have into those categories and then as much as we can we're going to try and eliminate the thoughts that go to other things yep. so those things are obviously for our athletes it's training it's yep. what are you doing in the gym when you get there and what are you doing for your training that's the obvious one nutrition your um your mindset recovery, uh, and sleep. And those are the things that we're really trying to maximize. Now, um, when we talk about recovery, as you said, a couple of those things kind of blur the yeah. line in terms of like, a lot of those things are recovery, right? Yeah. Like what nutrition is, yes, it's for poor performance. Yes, it helps your mental state. There's no like real defining like black and white, this one lives inside this yeah. box. But we put those, those are the pillars upon which the process lies. Right. Yeah, like you said, because there's recovery, but then there's sleep. And I would think that sleep is recovery. Usually, but, absolutely. But there are things but that- But it's such a big category unto itself, yeah, sleep, exactly. that we actually give it its own category. Yeah, interesting. Okay, so let's look at recovery Same then. Same thing with nutrition. Yep, exactly. So let's look at that within that, because we've talked about nutrition sort of a lot. And yep. you know, you can, you can dive down that rabbit hole. So let's dive down the recovery rabbit hole. What does that look like? Where is the, you know, where is step one, where it's page one on, you know, on that journey? Okay. So the first thing is understanding what recovery is and why it's important. Recovery in terms of the, um, kind of the life cycle of adaptation, right? So what we're trying to do is when we go to the gym, you're actually fatiguing and breaking down your fatiguing your central nervous system, you're fatiguing your energy systems and you're breaking down muscle. Yep. When you work out, technically you're getting weaker. Okay, so it makes sense. When you're doing grace, your first 10 clean and jerks feel a lot better than your middle 10 clean and jerks, which are better than your 20 to 30. And if you were to continue that cycle and keep going, by the time you get to 80, yeah. 90, 100, 200, 300, you could see what would happen. Yeah. You're fatiguing, you're getting worse. Now what happens is when you stop, you start the, recycle, the, the cycle back up. So imagine this on a graph and you're at homeostasis, you're at zero. And on the, what's the horizontal, the, the x-axis? X-axis, yep. On the x-axis is time and on the y-axis, the up and down, the vertical is um, adaption or fitness, yep. right? And we're trying to get fitter, so you're trying to go up. Yep. When you start working out, your fit, this sounds weird, your fitness, your strength, everything starts going down. You're mm -hmm. fatiguing, you're breaking things down. It gets worse. Once you stop, 
your body starts to recover mm -hmm. and gets stronger. And it starts to tick back up to baseline. Now, what we want to do is give enough time, and here's the interesting thing, that time is different for everybody based off a whole bunch of independent variables. As that starts to tick back up, our fitness is starting to get back to baseline. Mm -hmm. And if we wait a little bit longer, what we get is what we're all searching for, which is super compensation. You then become stronger, fitter than you were before, and it starts to go up past where you were before. Okay. Now, for you, that might be, you know, it, basically it's when people get past the domes, the delayed onset yep. muscle soreness. If we were doing hypertrophy training, yep. regular bodybuilding, yep. but not every workout elicits domes. So it's a little bit harder to tell. If you do a one rep deadlift, you might not be sore, but your CNS is fried. Mm -hmm. You might not be sore from doing Helen in a competition, but you enter aerobically and everything else is fried. So it's not, that's just one marker that tells us when to get back in the gym and go for it. Yep. The really big trick is how quickly can you get back in the gym to uh, then again, start that cycle over again. Because yep. if you don't start that cycle over again, you start to trickle back towards your homeostasis, back to ground zero. Yep. So we want this to be kind of like a, a wave pattern yep. going up higher and higher as we go through time. There is the stimulus cycle of fatigue, recovery, super compensation, workout again, fatigue, recovery, super compensation. And the idea is, the recovery process brings us back up to homeostasis and we give ourselves time to super compensate to get fitter. And is it safe to assume that that time is the thing that varies between people? Like I, I might need two days to recover from workout and Katri needs 20 minutes. Is yeah. that, can it be that extreme? At 100%. Okay. Um, to the point where Katrin might need two minutes right. to your ten, two days right. and my two days. <laughs> right. Right. Um, but yes, that's exactly right. And it's a big thing. So what happens is if she's able to shorten that up, mm -hmm. think of how much more training she gets in. For sure. That's the deal is yeah. he who gets in the most training, productive training, yep. it's got to be that. He who gets in the most productive training gets fittest. Mm -hmm. So all we're trying to do is shorten that up. Interesting. If you can shorten that up, you get to train more. If you right. get to train more, you get to... Back in the day when Lance Armstrong was the king of the yep. king of the Tour de France, when everyone was doping, yep. so let's call it an even playing field, <laughs> right? No one could hang with him because no one could recover like him. Fast. Now, yeah. it sounds ridiculous me saying that even out loud now because everyone knows he's doping. Yeah. But that's the deal. Right. They can't hang with his training program. It's yeah. not that he's genetically this freak. It's that he can recover faster yeah. than other people. Katrin recovers faster than me. So if we're put on the same training program, she's either one of two things can happen. She's not going to get blown up she's yep. not going to over train and get to that point where she has to spend four days off um or um she just compensates and she gets stronger fitter faster right so that's recovery is you know it's really funny they did a survey of um, um university aged athletes division one athletes who are really should be really educated in terms of like the gym. And they asked them, if you could improve any one of these things, what would you want to improve? And it was things like um, strength, uh, quickness. Um, uh, it, there's a host of, I wish I could remember these things, but it was yeah. about four or five things. And one of the things was ability to recover. Mm -hmm. Re ability to recover got zero votes. Literally not one person picked it, yeah. even as a top three choice. Yeah. And what those people are missing is if you are able to recover faster, all the others will go up because you're just the sum of your training stimulus. Yeah. Okay. So before we get into sort of the, the, how you actually manipulate, it's not the right word, but how you actually manipulate that recovery, how do you know on an individual level, like, how do I know if I'm recovered? How do I know if I need two days yeah. I, or no, I need 20 minutes? Like, is there, this is just like, I'm not sore anymore. Is there like a... Is there a way to, to know without like getting your blood drawn or something complicated? The hesitancy in my response is that's <laughs> such a good question. Yeah. If I knew that answer, we would have the trick yeah. to creating the world's fittest athletes, mm -hmm. a piece of it. Yep. That is what good coaches do. Okay. And that is what good athletes do. How hard can I push today knowing I have training tomorrow that I'm not gonna be blown up for tomorrow's training? Yep. So if we could all lift one rep maxes every single day we lifted, like, yeah, you'd get really, but you don't, everyone knows, or if I went as hard as I possibly could yep. and did the CrossFit games every week, it goes without saying, right. like, you're not gonna make gains doing that. Yeah. 
So that's, you're, you're asking the exact right question. And the answer is, I don't know. Yeah. We have a lot of but different- But that's what literally you do every day in the gym is, is yeah, and we've, to and we've used so many different things, right? Like people use, draw blood for, yeah. the scientific side of it is they draw blood to measure lactate, to mm -hmm. see like once, in between intervals. Once the lactate comes down, now we're ready to go really hard again. And we'll measure that, you know, and we say right at lactic threshold and all that type of stuff. Yep. Things from wearing um, wearable technologies like Whoop, which yep. measures your, um, it actually has a recoverability mm -hmm. score that you get every morning um, based off a whole bunch of different factors. Yep. HRV, so yep. heart rate variability, the the kind of the time and the, the frequency and the consistency of the time between your heartbeats. Resting heart rate, so what's, when you wake up in the morning, if you normally wake up and your heart rate is at 62 beats and you wake up at you know, 79 one day, like that's probably not a day you wanna mm -hmm. smash yourself in the right. gym. So um, your, your eagerness to train, your soreness, mm -hmm. your yeah. um, irritability, your hunger, like there is infinite, like yeah. I, I, I'm hesitant to use that word, but literally I bet it is infinite number of factors that go into determining how long should you rest and recover before you go again? Mm -hmm. And when you go again, the other variable there is how hard should that training session be? So it's why it would be awesome if this was just pure science. Yep. And science is trying really hard to get there. There's yep. a lot of really smart people um, pushing this in the exercise science world. Um, right now, today, I don't believe we're anywhere close. Yeah, I still believe, um, my gut intuition and talking to an athlete gets me closer than any of the other things I've already mentioned. Yeah. And it, it, what you say that, and, and I'm reminded that oftentimes, and you've said it before, is the first thing you ask Katrin or Brooke or whatever before training is, how do you feel? Yeah. And then, okay, got it. And let's adjust. Yeah. Let's and you know what their response is always, it's kind of like um, the same if you ask someone, how, what, what's Pretty your nutrition good. like? <laughs> um, so the answer to nutrition is, yeah. if you ask someone like, how do you, how's your nutrition? Yeah. The answer is always. Pretty good. Every, try it. <laughs> everyone in this, everyone <laughs> Says, try it. Say, you know, I'd like to, let's talk about your yeah. nutrition. How, how, how do you feel like your nutrition is right now? Are you eating pretty? And they'll say, it's pretty good. Yeah. Everyone responds that. <laughs> if you ask someone how they're feeling today, the answer is good. Yeah. Katrin, Cole, everyone I've ever worked with, the answer yeah. is good. And so their response, I'm, they're not allowed to say good. Gotcha. Um, they have so, to give you something useful. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> it's, a de it's a default answer. Yeah. So, it, and people do it all the time. Like, like, hey, Patrick, what's up? How you doing? Your response is pretty good. Yeah, <laughs> good. How you doing? Yeah, and you answer yeah. the phone. It's like yep. it's um, it's so it's how to not give an answer, but give yeah, an answer. Exactly. Okay, so all right, I think got a good a good sense of uh, what recovery is, the value of recovery. How do you actually go about and and recover? Like, what are the yeah. where where are those things that you that you say? Okay, this is what we're going to do in order to recover better. Okay, so there's a whole host of factors that go into what. <laughs> It's not just one thing, right? Mm -hmm. It's not just like, you know, um, take Advil and right. you're recovered. It's right. not that type of thing. Um, there's a whole bunch of different factors and some of these things lie outside of our recovery, but they're, I'm gonna talk about them because they need to be spoken about. Um, it's things that we've already talked about, which is um, nutrition. Yep. If I had to put one thing in terms of how to get you back in the gym quicker, it would be what you eat. Eating a clean diet with enough calories. And we talked about before about calorie restriction, make sure you're lean. Here's that double-edged sword. Yep. If you're not eating enough calories, you have a harder time recovering. So you have to eat enough calories. Um, so quality, quantity matters. Yep. But even more so, it I don't want to say more so, equally as important is the, the quality of those. And um, kind of like multifaceted. So we want to make sure we're getting the right micronutrients. So that's like <clears throat> getting all the zinc and the magnesium. All those things play huge factors in the ability to recover. Um, things like uh, the bigger players, like the macronutrients, like your protein is going to help your muscles repair. Carbohydrates are going to place glycogen stores. Fat is going to help the whole system run. It's like the whole, all those things matter. It's like, um, having plenty of like leafy green vegetables bring down inflammation. The mm -hmm. less inflammation, the faster you recover. Mm -hmm. So nutrition is a huge piece of that. Then you can go down like supplement roads, right? Yeah. Like BCAAs and um, um, uh, probiotics and creatine and all those things will help you recover. So nutrition is almost like its own book to itself. Right, right. And that's why it lives in its own category. Yeah. But that's the first one I would address. So is the is the primary goal there to reduce inflammation, like you said, or is there is it even way it's, more it's complicated? It's all of it. So that. that's one of the factors, but like um, um, 
replace energy stores, yep. right? So glycogen is a huge factor in what we do in a glycolytic sport. Yep. Um, for those of that aren't familiar, glycogen is like stored sugars in muscles and liver. And when you have really hard, intense efforts, that goes away. You want to replace those. Everyone's like good at protein shakes. Yep. Mm-hmm. Uh, if I had my choice and it was a default, like you live on this island or this island, I would probably go to the island that gives me carb sources, not protein sources post-workout. Gotcha. It's that important. Okay. If I was a in the bodybuilding world, which is where all the supplements that yep. we've we've learned about have come from, that industry, that's why that's so important. Oh, that that's, that's what stemmed from. Okay. Tangent, but that's like where all like strength conditioning has come from. Yeah. Is bodybuilding in the in the seventies? Yes. That's where it's, three sets of ten and all it's that Arnold stuff. Arnold Schwarzenegger. Yeah, yeah. It's really that's that's where we learned and sport conditioning fell into yeah. bodybuilding because they so those guys are getting strong. Yep. So it's a uh, which. I mean, this is a whole different conversation. Yeah. So let's, but um, there's lots of opinions on that. Yeah, it's interesting. Um, okay, so nutrition. I imagine that sleep is is also very important. Yeah, so sleep is its own category inside of that yeah. process, but it's part of recovery as well. And that's really the reason that we want to sleep. Yes, there's better performance from it and better cognitive function and better mindset, and you'll be able to attack your workouts better. But the big reason is because you're recovered. Yeah, both muscularly and from a CNS perspective, the whole thing is sleep is so important. Just uh, as a side note, like in terms of overall health, study done um, in the not fairly recently, I don't have the time on it, um, but they took healthy college age students, sleep deprived them for six days. At the end of those six days, those those sleep deprived students uh, became pre-diabetic. Hmm. So it's like, that's how like, you're gonna get sick, like literally yeah. sick, not in terms of like, oh, I have a cough, like right. disease. If you and if you have disease, you're not gonna be able to perform up to par. So sleep is hugely important. It is, think of sleep as during the day, you're just draining your battery. It's going down and down and down and down. You sleep and it goes, it's, it's plugging your phone back into its charger. That's yep. literally the process yep. of it. So when we talk about sleep, and this could be its own podcast as well, yep. There's a whole host of factors in there. We want to focus on quality and quantity. And most people just kind of stop at the quantity. Yep. Like I'm getting, what's the most important? Seven, eight, or nine hours. Like right. kind of put out there in perspective, seven hours below that is considered sleep deprived. Yep. But that's for, you know, nine to five soccer, you know, nine mm-hmm. to five Joe and soccer mom and that type of people yep. that are living. For the people that are out there trying to compete at a world-class level, Ours is nine hours is the minimum, and we love to be knee, edging towards ten. Yeah, um, I, it, it's it is super important. We can go into like all the like little things, and we should probably save it for another podcast yeah. about what sleep looks like. But to put that in perspective, your body goes through different cycles, and everyone's kind of heard of this, like yep. REM, like yep. rapid eye movement. That's actually not the one. Everyone's like, you got to get. Into REM. That's actually not the one that gives you all the juice. REM and I think it's called light sleep actually, whatever the ones before REM is, is your body is kind of, your mind is kind of still operating at uh, a conscious level. You got to get into what's after REM, which is deep sleep. And when you get into deep sleep, that's when the good stuff happens. And the good stuff for people that want to get bigger, stronger, faster, one of those good stuffs is HGH. Mm. Literally like the banned substance that people get you know, suspended from major leagues, your body naturally produces it twice. It produces it during that deep sleep cycle and after intense workouts. Hmm. That's the two times you get it naturally. So if you are sleep depriving yourself of one of those sleep cycles, you're missing out on potentially 10, 20, 30% of the HGH you could be getting. Everybody knows how HGH helps you recover. That's the jam. So you got to make sure you're getting enough quantity. You're getting that extra cycle, yep. but you got to get yourself into deep sleep. If you're not in deep sleep, you don't get it either. Okay. So it's quality and quantity. Gotcha. Um, <clears throat> okay. Nutrition, sleep. The next thing, the next sort of obvious uneducated thing that I think of when I think of recovery is like the Mark Pros or the the muscle stimulation or something yeah. like that. Is that, I imagine that that's part of it. Like yep. the, even, even like lacrosse balls and foam rollers yeah. down to that. So, yeah, excellent. Um, the next thing is kind of like taking care of your muscles, okay. right? So, um, and the, and the all of those things that you just mentioned are I I think have uh, varying levels of benefits. Yep. The one I would go towards kind of the most is um, 
professional body work. Oh, interesting. So if you <clears> like, <throat> so the, the kind of one extreme of this would be like stretching, yep. right? Like taking a yoga class or doing a ROM wad or something like that. There's some sort of levels of like, yeah, um, you could be, you know, getting blood flow and all that type of stuff. Um, elongating muscle tissues that might've been tight, but I would rather see people work on the quality of their muscles. Not necessarily the goal of, of, of um, recovering through stretching is trying to, um, let's get away from the debate about stretching or not. Sure. Uh, instead, what we're trying to do through professional body work is break up adhesions um, and get the body to function the way it's supposed to. I think there's big central nervous system benefits to getting professional body work done. Now, it's expensive, mm -hmm. it's time consuming. You have to find a professional and people aren't gonna be able to do that Unless you're Tom Brady, you're not gonna be able to do that every single day before right. and after every training session. Right. If you could, I think that you'd be able to sustain much higher levels of training than if you didn't, right? That's mm -hmm. kind of obvious. So I would default to that one. Now, the next ones after that are kind of like a big step down, but they're things like self myofascial release. Yep. And this is where like lacrosse balls and foam rollers is basically non-professional body work. Right. You're doing it to yourself. Right. I think that is hugely beneficial. I know a lot of people grab, jump on a foam roller or lacrosse ball before their workout. To me, that is not recovery. Mm -hmm. That's prepping for the workout. Mm -hmm. So that's helping you increase your range of motion so you're, um, you're, you're be able to function and then perform in the workout up to, your, up, to, up to where you want to be. After the workout or away from workouts is where we want to do that if you're trying to recover. I think it's hugely beneficial. You jumping on a foam roller for 30 minutes while you're watching TV at night, I think that's awesome, mm -hmm. really good. Similar to that is something like a, a Mark Pro or a Compex um, Power Dot, yep. things like that, muscle stimulations. Yep. The purpose of those things is to just send blood to the area. So if you have an area that's not recovering or giving you some issues, you put that on there, it gives like involuntary muscle contractions yep. really fast yep. and it sends extra blood to the area. Okay. Good blood in. So, um, or like a Normatec. Yep. Normatec would be, um, Normatec like those are like giant boot things you said. Normatec is like it's upper body, lower body, yeah. but it's basically, it's a compression in systemized things. Okay. So it's basically like an oil change for your body. Gotcha. So imagine like you got all this waste product in your muscles, in your legs from a bad workout yep. and you, you know, you do some sort of like horrific front squat, uh, walking, lunge, box jump, uh, burpee workout, mm -hmm. and your legs are just full of bike. You know, okay, it's, it's mm -hmm. atrocious, right? <laughs> well programmed yeah, workout. Yes. <laughs> okay. Um, deliberate interference yep. where you just can't get away from it. Yep. Um, and you got all this waste product built up in your legs. Well, if you just kind of like, okay, now I'm going to, you know, um, run to the office and now I'm going to sit in a chair or I'm going to jump in my car and drive, you know, to somewhere. It just kind of sits there yeah. and it requires the the heart to just pump the good stuff in there, grab it and take it out. That takes a while for that to do that. Something like a Normatec um, or one of these like muscle simulations, essentially just kind of like speeds that process up. Okay. It's going to um, force more good blood in, which brings oxygenated blood in and that's going to pull the, the kind of waste product out in a way. I think it's a pretty beneficial thing. Mm -hmm. um, it's something I would definitely want to, my athletes and all of my athletes have that part of their product recovery protocol where they do use um, either or or both. They mm -hmm. both have muscle stim and uh, compression things like Normatec. Gotcha. Um, okay, so we've covered nutrition, sleep, muscle. Is there another piece to the, the recovery puzzle? Yeah, and it's um, kind of like the central nervous system and okay. like your mind. Okay. So... Um, you need kind of the yin and the yang, right? Which um, we work out really hard with a lot of intensity. You need the downtime as well. Mm. So to me, downtime, I would rather it not be um, flipping through the channels mm -hmm. um, or surfing social media. Because mm -hmm. to me, that doesn't um, reprieve your mind to allow it to totally relax. Yep. So this is things like, meditation or salt baths or going for walks in nature or sitting on the beach. Like literally you need yep. that kind of recovery, the yin and the yang. So, you know, that perfect world is like 
where you live in this vacuum, there's no outside stress, and you go to the gym, you bust your ass as hard as you can, you eat perfectly afterwards, you do the Norma Tech, you stim, you go in to the beach, you're out getting your vitamin D, you're mm -hmm. relaxing, your feet are in the sand and in the water, you're in nature, you come home, you take an Epsom salt bath, you put on a candle, you meditate, <laughs> like really. That like, sounds like a good day. <laughs> exactly, right? And then think of how prepared you would be yeah to work out the next day as opposed to what most people do. Yeah. They try to do that same level of training, but then they go to a busy job, then they go and drive their kids, they try and make dinner, they try and deal with dirty diapers, they are have interrupted sleep, yeah. and that you can see how yeah. one is going to, you know, we talk about that 1%, well, yeah. that's a lot bigger than 1%. Drag that out over the course of three, four, five months. Now drag that over the course of three, four, five years, yeah. and we're talking, Literally, the differences of going to the CrossFit Games versus middle of the pack in the open. Yeah. That's the difference. Because one can sustain the training, one cannot. Right. Right. Okay. Um, those are four big sort of areas. Anywhere else, either inside of any of those, or is there any? Is there a fifth? Yeah, um, I think that's a... I, I want to dispel a couple things. Yeah. Um, which people... So a lot of people think that... Um, you know, I'm so sore. Like, what yeah. should I do? I'm so sore. So what people do is they um, will pop like an Advil yep. or something like that to help them, yep. you know, recover. And, or they will um, ice. Yep. You know, I'm so sore. I'm going to ice my muscles. You see this in the CrossFit games. Mm -hmm. Athletes um, get done with a workout. Jump or you see in this, the ice bath. They jump in an ice bath. Yeah. You see this in training camp at NFL yep. training. Pro they jump in an ice bath. Ice, we already talked about what we're trying to do recovering, which mm -hmm. is bring use blood flow to bring good blood there and take bad away. What ice does is slows that down. Mm. In no situation would ice ever speed up that process. So what you're doing is you're slowing down, you're putting traffic, extra traffic around the accident, right? You're trying to get the emergency vehicles there yep. to get there and clean up the area. But instead of clearing out the roads and getting those things as fast putting as you can, roadblocks up. you're putting roadblocks in more and making it even slower hmm. and gummier. So ice is a bad thing in terms of recoverability. I know it's going to, you see it on the pros, yeah. right? The pitcher gets done with his game yeah. and what do they do? They ice wrap the him up with ice. Yep. It's, it's, that's not a good thing. Yeah. What they should be doing is putting a muscle sim, sim on there yep. to bring blood flow there. Yep. It's really, it's really, we think about it like conceptually, it's common sense to the point where it's not just common sense. The guy that created the RICE protocol, yep. rest, ice, compression, elevation, that person has since come out and said, I was wrong about mm. the ice. Huh. Yet people are still course, doing it yeah. and athletic trainers are doing it everywhere. Yep. I get it's contrarian. I'm going to say it again. Ice will not help you recover for the long term. If you're in pain, it can numb it and make pain go away. Gotcha. And that's what people get confused with. Yep. Same thing with an NSTAD, a non-steroid anti-inflammatory like Advil. That does the same thing where it's going to send up a blocker yep. to send the healing signals to the body. Like I need to get the good things yep. here and pull them away. Is it going to make it less painful? Yes. But in the long term, from incident to recovery, that cycle that we just talked about, it prolongs that. It mm -hmm. makes it longer rather than shorter. So if, as long as you can deal with the pain, my take on this would be not to ice, not to use Advil, instead to go towards these other protocols we talked about. Yep. Eat leafy green vegetables. Don't eat crap, mm -hmm. which is going to inflame your body like sugar and yep. other toxins. Sleep really well. Get body work done and make sure you set yourself up in a relaxing state where you don't have high stress. Where does, um, where does saunas come into this? Anywhere? Have you had any? Do you play with that at all? Yeah. So or saunas, really in, in general. Yeah. So okay. So uh, two different things. So um, so other thing actually. Um, just want to say this: the ice baths do have because you brought up heat. Yep. Ice baths do have their play, but the uh, purpose of an ice bath is to bring down body temperature. Oh, okay. These athletes after which the game, explains why right after yes, Marathon, exactly one hundred two degrees. Or whatever. Exactly. Okay. So particularly, what you'll notice is last year at the games, how many athletes got ice baths. You it's were good, there. But yeah, I wasn't there, but a I fraction yeah. Yeah. of them. 
It's not because the workload was less, it's because the temperature wasn't as high. So what those people are doing is intuitively, they don't even know it. Yeah. But what they're intuitively doing is bringing down their body temperature. Gotcha. Once the body temperature comes back, that speeds up recovery. So we need to get back to homeostasis. Gotcha. Um, heat, in other words, heat in other areas, um, let's say uh, we'll bring, heat is good in terms of like, man, my back is tight. Yep. Heat is a good thing because heat brings more, yep. the, the traffic will flow faster. Yep. So that's a good thing. Mm -hmm. But saunas is a little bit different. In saunas, what you're doing is you're kind of putting yourself in MRF right. type environments, yep. mm -hmm. which we're trying to get your body back to homeostasis. So saunas have um, benefit because kind of like, um, I would put them in the, in the world of like um, elevation training. Mm -hmm. It's an outside element that can actually speed up adaptations. Mm -hmm. So you can actually get their studies we're practicing, we're playing with it. We've done it for a couple of years where you can actually get some of the, I talk about HGH. Mm -hmm. You can actually get HGH release, uh, HGH to um, uh, release in your body from prolonged sauna sessions. Okay. So it's a little bit different. If you want to talk about like the sauna session releases HGH and HGH helps you recover. Yes, mm -hmm. I agree with that. Mm -hmm. um, but just getting you in a sauna to recover uh, no, unless you're in there long enough for that to happen, yes. But there's a double-edged sword because coming out of a sauna, you're gonna be more fatigued yep. and the other things. Yep. So they do have their place yep. um, and it's a great question. It's a thing that can go into a recovery protocol um, as can things like float tanks and yeah. uh, de you know, deprivation tanks yep. and um, a lot of other things, um, but I'd say those are on the fringes yep. of the- They're of not the, as important as those three or four things that- Yeah, yeah. Okay, yep. very cool. Anything else? That was meaty. That was a lot of, a lot right, of good no, stuff. If it's meaty, then we're, we're good. All right, yeah. cool, we'll call it there. Cool, thanks, thanks Pat.